this video, we will be talking about accounting for depreciation. Depreciation is applicable to property, plant, and equipment. The benefit of property, plant, and equipment to the company is extended over a period of time. Kaya yung cost of the PPE is also allocated in future periods. And it is allocated based on the depreciation formula. Cost less residual value over estimated useful life is the formula for annual depreciation. Cost includes the purchase price. Purchase price if magkano mo nabili yung PPE. On the other hand, if nagconstruct ka ng building, the materials, labor, overhead, and other costs in the construction will be part of the construction price. Addition to that, Cost to bring the asset to its present location for its intended use is part of the cost. Example nito ay handling fee. And also, cost to bring the asset to a condition necessary for its use such as installation fee. Tapos na tayo kung ano yung cost. Next is residual value. It is the amount of PPE at the end of its useful life. For example, I have an equipment with 5 years useful life. At the end of 5 years, magkano ko pa siya pwedeng maibenta? So that is the residual value. It is not depreciated. And also, other name ng residual value is salvage value. Tapos na tayo sa cost and residual value. Last thing that we will define is the estimated useful life. Estimated useful life ay yung period kung gaano katagal magagamit ng isang company or business yung PPE. Simply, it is the life of the property. After computing the depreciation for the year, we will now go to the adjusting entry. The entry to record the depreciation. We debit the depreciation expense and the amount computed. And credit accumulated depreciation. Depreciation expense is a nominal account. Nominal accounts are closed every year through the closing entries. The accumulated depreciation is a real account. However, it is a contra account, meaning may dinidecrease siya na account. Ano yung dinidecrease niya? Of course, the PPE. So for example, we have the equipment and then the amount. So the accumulated depreciation equipment will reduce the equipment account. So, that's why naging siyang contra account. Contra means a deduction. Also, an addition, this formula of depreciation is known as the straight line method. Ibig sabihin, for every year, equal yung depreciation na makukuha. This is the simplest form. Kaya, ito yung usually na ginagamit. Pero, meron ring ibang method. Example nito is sum of years digit, double declining method, and many more. So let us compute the depreciation expense in the lowang example natin. First example, an office furniture amounting to 30,000 is depreciated over an estimated useful life of 5 years with no residual value. Depreciation for the year is equal to the cost of 30,000 minus 0 since wala siyang residual value over 5 years of estimated useful life. So, ang na-compute natin ay 6,000. 6,000 is the annual depreciation ng furniture na to. So, to record, we will be having an adjusting entry to depreciation. We debit depreciation expense of 6,000 and we credit accumulated depreciation dash office furniture wag natin kakalimutan yan kailangan lagay natin kung what type of PPE which is 6,000 then an equipment amounting to 200,000 is depreciated over an estimated useful life of 6 years with a salvage value of 20,000 so this time given na yung salvage value T equals cost of 200,000 less salvage value of 20,000 over 6 years of estimated useful life.
So, ang nakuha natin ay 30,000 deposition expense. So, e-entryhan din natin ito. To record, we debit a depreciation expense of 30,000. And also, we credit an accumulated depreciation equipment of 30,000. nagkamali tayo dun sa sanayim nung kanina. Office furniture siya dapat. So, office furniture. So, dito, accumulated depreciation equipment, which is amounting to 30,000. So, at the end of the year, if tinanong kung ano yung carrying amount of office furniture, we just simply do this. 30,000 cost less the accumulated depreciation of 6,000. So, we get of the year, 24,000 yung carrying amount ng furniture. So, ganun din yung gagawin natin sa isa. Carrying amount of equipment, just simply do cost of 200,000 less depreciation of 30,000. The carrying amount of equipment at year end is 170,000. That is accounting for depreciation. Another type of adjusting entries are the accruals, the accrued income and accrued expense. Accrued income are income already earned but not yet collected. Paano ba makukonsider na earned na yung income? If you are engaged in service activity, service rendered to customers is considered earned. On the other hand, if manufacturing or merchandising business, goods delivered to customers or na yung income mo nun. The pro forma entry to record the accrued income is you debit a receivables and credit an income account. Accrual basis of accounting is used, kaya when income is already earned, kahit hindi ka pa nakakakollect, you record an income. And you record a receivables kasi you have the right to collect. Next is accrued expense. These are already incurred but not yet paid. Pag sabihin ng already incurred, nagamit mo na pero hindi mo pa nababayaran. So, you have an obligation to pay kung ano man yung nagamit mo. One of the best example here is utilities. For example, your electricity bill, water bills, di ba? You already availed the service pero hindi mo pa nababayaran. Accrual basis of accounting is also used. You record an expense when incurred regardless of when paid. So, the pro forma entries to record the accrued expense is we debit an expense account and we credit a payable account. We have the obligation to pay kung ano yung dapat nating bayaran. To further understand, we have sample transactions about accruals. A 20-day 10% promissory note dated December 20, 2019 received from Mr. Lee for 50,000 pesos is outstanding at year end. No December 20 na receive tayo ng promissory note. So ano ba yung promissory note? Promissory note is a formal promise to pay. Tayo yung naka-receive ng promissory note, kaya we have receivables. So it is interlinked with the accounts receivable. However, it is done formally kasi nga it is reduced into writing. The probability of collection is higher but not 100% sure. The notes received from Mr. Lee has 10% interest, meaning yung promissory note is interest-bearing. It is stated on December 20, 2019. So at year end, December 31, 2019, titignan natin kung magkano na yung na-accrue na interest. To compute, gagamitin natin yung formula for interest, which is interest is equal to PRT. P is the principal R is the rate, 10 is the time. So, principal is yung 50,000. 50,000, we multiply it to the rate of 10%. Itong 10% na to, if silent, this is the annual rate. Times 10%. Ano yung gagamitin natin na time? The note is dated from December 20 and it is outstanding at year end. So, ilang araw yung pagitan ng dalawa? 
from December 20 to December 31, in between ay 11 days. So, 11 days ang gagamitin natin. Ano yung magiging denominator natin? Since the rate is annual, kailangan yung time natin is also converted annually. So, ilang days pa sa isang year? Di ba usually 365? However, in computation for the interest, ang ginagamit natin na denominator ay 360. So, always yan ang ginagamit. Unless sasabihin ng mismong problem kung ano yung gagamitin mo. So, now let us compute for the interest. 50,000 times 10% interest rate times 11 divided by 360 equals to 152.77 or round off to 153. So the crude interest of the note is 153. Since tayo yung naka-receive ng promissory note, magkakaroon tayo ng receivable and income. So ano to? Yung problem number one is an accrued income. So, pro forma entry natin, we debit interest receivable and we credit an interest income amounting to 153. Next problem, number 2, a 30-day 10% promissory note dated December 5, 2019 issued to XYZ company for 30,000 is outstanding at year end. This time, tayo yung nag-issue ng promissory note. If tayo yung nag-issue ng promise to pay, tayo yung may payable, tayo yung may obligation. So this is an example of accrued expense. The promissory note we issued is dated on December 5, 2019 and it is outstanding at year end. So December 31 then. So let us also compute for the interest. Interest is equal to PRT. Our principal amounted to 30,000. The rate is also the same, which is 10%. The time is between December 5 and December 31. So, ilang days meron don? In between, ang naglapse ay 26 days. Denominator natin is 360 pa rin. Let us now compute for the interest. 30,000 times 10% times 26 divided by 360. Ang makukuha natin ay 216.67. Or simply round off natin into 217. So this is the accrued interest expense. Next, tayo yung nag-issue ng promissory note tayo yung magbabayad na 217 na interest. The entry is, we debit an interest expense of 217 and magkikredit tayo ng interest payable amounting to 217. Last problem for the accruals, problem number 3, Unpaid utilities at year end amounted to 7,000. So, unpaid utilities, hindi pa natin nababayaran. This is an example of accrued expense. Since unpaid utilities is already given, hindi na natin kailangan mag-compute. So, the entry to record, we debit utilities expense of 7,000. And we credit a utilities payable amounting to 7,000 as well.